Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Explore, we're going to take a look at a bitmap fonts. Now, CreateJS has just launched on their code pen an example of using bitmap fonts, and we hadn't used them before in Zim, so we thought we would explore. Let's go in and take a look at the code now. And probably what we should do is have a look at what we're talking about. So we'll open it in a browser. Open in browser. And there it is. That is a bitmap font. So isn't that nice? Bitmap fonts are cool. So this is basically the code pen that CreateJS made, but we recreated it in Zim just to make sure that there's uh, no difficulties in doing so. I also wanted to take a look at um, if we had any time savings for you as you were coding. Okay, so um, here is the uh, the bitmap font. So we're in a Zim fit template right here. We are bringing in the bitmap uh, font atlas. So here's what that looks like. It's actually bigger than that. That's it reduced. Uh, it's a bunch of letters in certain positions. Okay, so it's much like a sprite sheet. And indeed, we get the data exactly like a sprite sheet saying, hey, for this image, here's where all the frames are. And they map these, um, these letters here, or animations, in a sense. So we then bring that in, we're just uh, skipping by a couple things here, right here, a new CreateJS sprite sheet. And then we pass in that data that we just saw. And then we're making a new CreateJS bitmap uh, with this word, words at count. Here's our words, bitmap fonts are cool, count is zero, so the first one is bitmap. So we're making a CreateJS bitmap text with some words, and we're passing in the sprite sheet, and the sprite sheet collects the data. So if we were to bring this into Zim, as in a new Zim bitmap text, we would probably abstract that so we could just pass right in the data, and then in the background we would end up making a sprite sheet. Uh, and we'd also provide a way that if you wanted to, you could pass in a, an already existing sprite sheet, etc. That's what we did with Zim Sprite, amongst other things. Uh, we could even pass in just the JSON file that held all of these things. And so, <coughs> excuse me, that's a, another thing we might do if we were to um, do that. We, we'd then be able to save a little bit of uh, typing there. And not only that, but since all this is CreateJS, we don't have one of these bitmap texts in Zim. We're Zimifying it. And by zimifying it with these round brackets around it, we we can then start doing things like center regging it and posing it and animating on it. So we can chain all of our uh, zim methods that we're used to. Okay, so that's the deal there. And indeed, um, there's a circle being created in the background. Now, uh, we when we first made the zim circle, kept it a little bit. Uh, more simple. We did not put in a radial gradient parameter and a linear gradient parameter there. We may turn towards doing that in the near future, but instead we provided a color command, and that's kind of handy too. You could then use this color command to adjust various things, one of those things being a radial gradient. So basically this is pretty well the same as what we would be doing in CreateJS. The circle itself saves a bit of um, a bit of time. You don't have to make a new shape and set fills and all this. It's, it's all done through parameters. And we can also chain on things like dot center and dot help to that. So that's um, some savings there. Another thing that, that we'll be able to save when we center reg, for instance, this, um, this text that will save setting bounds and getting bounds and uh, getting half the width and sending the registration points to that. So um, you'll see, oh, well, why don't I show you? Here's the, the CreateJS side of things here. So it's um, kind of the same. This is CreateJS getting staged and stuff, which we all do with the frame. And then uh, once things load in, there's the data. So the data is the same. Here is 
this one right here is a background shape and we're setting a radial fill on it. So this is creating a shape and then eventually way over here we draw the circle in it. So it's basically the same stuff anyway. We didn't cache. We can cache with just a CA like a cache, we can chain on cache and it will automatically cache to the size of things for us. Uh, we could set the cache to something else, but that would be a default. And we could use the GPU by turning on the GPU. I didn't turn on the GPU. It's uh, it's pretty easy. It's just a GPU true and the, and the Zim frame. Here's the bitmap text and that is loading in the sprite sheet and the sprite sheet's calling that same data. But it's this stuff right here, all of these uh, get the bounds of the text, get set the reg to text. So all of these things where we're saving some time is center reg takes care of that for us. Here's what the tween looks like in CreateJS. Uh, it goes all the way over to here. Wee, wee, wee. So there's a tween that has been chained. Let's just uh, drop these down onto new lines so we can get a better look at that. Um, the the chaining of tweens is is excellent in CreateJS. It does mean that oops, Daisy, that we can do anything that we want, and these things all sort of wait for one another. So, Um, so it'll get that, it'll wait 500, and it'll do then whatever's after that, so it'll tween it to that, and this wait happens after that one. So these are all, when we chain the tweens, they're all in order in, in time, which is very powerful. So we can throw in weights anytime we want, and tween to, to whatever we want. So we have some, we're passing in parameters here. We've got parameters without metadata, just to note that we don't know for sure if that's an ease, mind you, we could tell. We don't know what that is exactly, but it's probably the time, that type of thing. Uh, but we are getting some extra data because of uh, each method is small and, and it holds a couple things, so we know that's a weight. All right, so there's the CreateJS tween. And I think you'll find that the CreateJS tween is about the same size as the Zim tween. Here's or the Zim animate. So here's the Zim animate uh, right there. So what we were looking at before is that. And when Zim first started with animate, it, we didn't know how far we were going to go with it. And animate, it, it chains on. The nice thing is, is animate actually chains on to the object whereas the CreateJS tween doesn't. It does the chaining itself, but it doesn't chain onto the object. So animate chains onto the object, but it was left, it, we could certainly chain a bunch of animates. We could say animate this, animate this, animate this, but all of those started at the same time. They did not wait for the last an animation to finish. So we would have to put weights, or uh, we would manually put weights in those animates and have to calculate the time that it had to wait and the time kept getting longer and longer because it was a time from a single beginning point. I don't know if that makes sense to you. So uh, animate fell behind in a sense, uh, create JS in that point. It wasn't quite as handy. So uh, we then introduced the animation series. So there's bubbling videos on that. The animation series just says, oh, okay, well, tell you what, we normally pass in the animation object like that. So if you wanted to just do one animate, it would look like dot animate, and you'd pass these things in, and that's would do that animation. So we said, okay, why don't we, if we want to do this one and then wait, like, or when, when this one's done, do this next one, and when this one's done, do the next one, let's put those into an array. So if you pass in an array here for the animation object, then you, um, you can do them in a series. So we call that an animation series, which is cool. And now we're back to parity in a sense. So... Uh, I think we can do pretty well the same thing that the CreateJS, uh, TweenJS can do, which is nice. Now there, like I said, there are other advantages to animate. One is that it flattens everything, so you're just dealing with parameters again, and um, your animate can tween, or sorry, animate can chain onto your object, which is handy. And there's a bunch of other things baked into Animate, too, that I think you'll find really cool, like animation sequences, which is different than series. 
and a little bit, um, I don't know, it might be considered a, a bit more finicky, but we've got our, our wait times and stuff. So we're looping and then there's a loop call. Um, if you wait, you've got a wait call. If you rewind, you've got a rewind call. If, you've, if you're rewind waiting, like that's waiting after you rewind, you've got a rewind wait call, <laughs> uh, etc. So, I mean, it, it does make for more parameters, whereas the chaining of uh, CreateJS was a bit more elegant in that you could call at any time in there. You didn't have to specify whether it was a wait call, a rewind call, etc. So from a structural standpoint, I think the CreateJS um, Chained tweens is probably a bit more elegant, but uh, I find that in practice, I think uh, you don't really notice it when you use ZimAnimate, and ZimAnimate gives you other advantages too, like nice, easy chaining of quick animations onto things. Oh, well, that was an exploration, wasn't it? It was an exploration in babble, 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 Ooh, is that freaky? <laughs> anyway, uh, I wonder if we're, <laughs> we're going to leave that one in there. Oh, my goodness. Hey, it's Explore, right? We don't have to be too quick with things. It's all right. I'm just going back and forth a little. Anyway, down we get to our loop call. Our loop call is pretty cool. Our loop call just says, hey, when um, you're looping, go get another word. So we're increasing the uh, index there and getting getting the word and we're modulusing that on so this can go forever. And it was fun to do this and then look back at the CreateJS and see the exact same thing in there. Whoa, coders, huh? So here's there, yeah, same thing. This, uh, it's a bit tricky because that is the plus plus that goes before. So you don't take this and put it there. That's called the post iteration operator. So what happens is uh, whatever this calculates to would be before you do that. But if you put them in front like that, then that means it's the pre-iteration operator. Iterate and then do this stuff. So you want the uh, you want the one in front. So I have that. They have that. That's great. We use the modulus, and so hey, that's cool. That's how it's how it's done. Um, and then a nice thing is we're just center regging. Now a slight snag in center reg is that if you don't put anything in the center reg, we have um, gone to default to just center regging that on the stage and positioning it in the center of the stage as well. So that's the majority of the times that's what we want to do when we center reg something. Hey, we're just we're going to center the registration and we're going to center it on the stage. Sometimes though, we don't want to center it on the stage because if we did, it would show up in the middle of the stage at this point. We don't need that. So we've just had to adjust the third parameter in there to false. False will not uh, bother re-adding that to the center of the stage. Got that? All it does is center reg it. Now, the reason why we're center regging that is when we go to get new text, the text, is, it's a bitmap text, and we have to recenter registration point that. So, uh, <laughs> whereas if we were using uh, a Zim label, all we needed to do for a label, if we put a label in here, we would um, start off with the label centered. We would say a line uh, colon center for the labels center property. And then we wouldn't have to, buy, every time we add new text to it, that text would automatically get centered in the label. And we wouldn't even have to bother doing this here. But the bitmap text uh, will change size based on what, what word is put in there. Okay, so well, if you want to see that, here's what it would look like. And we'll refresh here. Uh, well, I guess we're not going to refresh there at all. We will open a browser. So in comes bitmap. It'll be good. It's centered. But the next thing we'll uh, see fonts is off center. So the bitmaps was long, there's R. So basically it's keeping the center registration of the word bitmap. Um, and that's not quite right, is it? So we do need to, each time we change a word, center the registration point on it. Okay, so there's Zim. If we take a look, what do you think? That's Zim. Here is CreateJS. They're roughly the same things. So you can see, I think it just, I think it's some bound stuff primarily that's uh, getting in the way here of that. 
Um, that does look simpler. And indeed, it's um, 4,100 characters versus 55, 69 characters. So that's 74% which is nice. Uh, if we do bring in the bitmap text, we'd have to, or we would reduce this line right here. If one day we did bring in the radial gradient, we would then pass this in as a parameter into here. But I'm not sure if it's worth it. You know, we'll see about that. Otherwise, I think um, that's it. Pretty happy with how things are going. And I do like the bitmap fonts. That is very cool. So uh, this has been a Zim Explore of bitmap fonts. Isn't that nice? And I am Dr. Abstract. That's me down there in the, uh, in the little bubble out in space. I'm broadcasting. Broadcasting from space.